if Muslims get to define what Islam is, Christians get to define what Christianity is. Christians don't believe in three gods, we believe in one God. So if the Quran says we believe in three gods, the Quran is wrong, it's saying something that is wrong. Now if the Quran was right, if, if, big, big italics, underscored and bolded letters, if the Quran is right, you would be able to find some authoritative document written by Christians or some verse in the Bible that teaches that I believe in one God. Sorry, three gods. Can you Google now any authoritative document of the Christians or any verse in the Bible that teaches that I believe in three gods? There is none. And that means that your Quran is wrong. Now, let me ask you this question. Does the Quran say that it should have any errors in it at all? Right, so it should be free from errors. So since we have identified an error, and remember, it says when you, speaking to doubters, to, to the polytheists, to the Christians and the Jews, if the Quran were from any other, you, i.e. me, would find errors in it, the Quran. I have demonstrated to you that I have found an error in the Quran. So I've passed the Quranic test. And I've shown to you, therefore, that the Quran is not true. Yes, it's a logical argument. It's a logical argument. Yeah, and you're a logical person because you can say it. Well done. What's your name? Omar. Omar, do you have any questions about Christianity? Yes. Go on. Can we just step over here, away from this shouty person? I agree. For example, you know Jesus, when he resurrected, they say, for the sake of argument. You stand so far away, it draws people out. Come forward, guys. Go on. When he resurrected, uh, he said, don't touch me, I yet, I'm yet to ascend to my God and your God. Yes. So, for, so now, for instance, yeah. Jesus has a God. But if Jesus is God, he can't have a God. So that's my argument. So let me reply to that. Let me reply to that. What Christians believe is what it says in what we call the Carmen Christi which is in Philippians chapter 2 and it says have this mind in you that was first in Christ that being equal with God he did not grasp at equality but he humbled himself and took the form of a servant and, and so what we as Christians believe is that the son took to himself a humanity to become a perfect human being now I'm sure you would agree with me that the perfect human being is not going to be an atheist is he? Of course. No, of course not. We believe that Jesus Christ was a perfect human being. So the perfect human being can't be an atheist. So he relates to his father, the father of the Trinity, as his God, as a human. And so when he says, I have not ascended to my God and your God, that is, as you correctly interpret, an affirmation that he is truly human. Christians use this verse to show that Jesus Christ is truly human. Yes. But what we say is he's not just a human. So when he was saying, don't touch me, I have not yet ascended to my God and your God, the God there is the reference to the Father, and he's speaking as a human being. And that's why he says that. Now notice he says, my God and your God which shows that the commonality between the person speaking and the person being spoken to has to be their humanity. Yeah? However, there's nothing in that statement that denies that Christ is also divine. Right? Okay. Any other questions? So, for example, does God know everything? He knows everything. Yeah. But Jesus, he didn't know the hour. Right. So let me answer that question. So, to answer that question, the, the contradiction that Muslims think that they've proven this is this. God, one of the attributes of God is that he possesses all knowledge. Human beings do not possess all knowledge. Therefore, if Christ doesn't know everything, it can't be God. Have I understood your argument? Yes. Right. right yes. Now let me show you how your argument actually has a hidden assumption that you're not aware of. Right? that actually when you know the answer it actually addresses the hidden assumption okay so as i've already said christians believe that god took to himself in jesus christ a full humanity we affirm that that full humanity possesses as in it was there in his person the full knowledge of god right 
But if that's true, why does he say no one knoweth the hour, not the Father, nor the Son, nor the angels? Because even though he possesses the knowledge, he does not have access to the knowledge. Let me give you an example of what I mean to demonstrate the difference between possession and access. Have you ever gone into a situation where you've gone home, you've put your keys down somewhere, and then the next day you wanted to leave and lock your door and you can't find your keys? Yes. And then you've sat there scratching your head and then you've remembered, oh my keys, I put them under the bush. Yes. You've been in that situation. The fact that you remembered meant that you always had the knowledge, agreed? Yes. So you always possessed the knowledge. Yes. But you didn't have always access to the knowledge, agreed? Yes. So you can possess knowledge without access, agreed? Yes. Right, so Christ, in and because of his humanity, he possesses the knowledge of God, but he didn't always have access to the full knowledge of God. And that's why Christ says, truly, that no one knoweth the hour, no one knoweth the hour, no one knoweth, only the Father knoweth the hour, nor the Son, nor the angels. Any other questions? No, that's it. There, there were the two questions. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, uh, go on. it's about the reliability of the Bible. Yeah, go on. Example, you know the authors. And we don't know the, the what, sorry? The authors of the Bible. The, the what? Gospels. The Gospels. The yeah. Gospels, yeah. We don't know who wrote them. Who sorry? Wrote them. Right. So we don't know if it's reliable. And then the same, for example, I was talking to Sheikh Mohammed, and he told me that the old Trinity doctrine was first in the, the Gospels yeah. by Constantino. Uh, yeah. Constantino. Right. So I don't know if it's reliable or not. Okay, so let me reply to that. Let me reply to that by telling you first that Sheikh Mohammed is lying. And the reason why Sheikh Mohammed is lying is because he's actually repeating the lies of Ibn Kathir. You go and check, right, Ibn Kathir's Tasfiyah of Surah 4171 and Surah 5116. I think it's those two, right? Ibn Kathir is the one who states that Constantine invents the Trinity and forces it into the Gospels. Ibn Kathir is the one who says that um, Constantine changes the religion of the Apostles, right? But then what I would invite you to do as a genuine student of knowledge is to go and actually look at historical historians and research the life of St. Constantine for yourself. Because I've already done this. I've got a degree in religious studies, which is the study of the history of, of religion. And I specialized in Christianity. And I know about the life of St. Constantine. I bet you if me and Sheikh Mohammed did a questionnaire right now with no rehearsal, I would be able to answer questions about St. Constantine and Sheikh Mohammed wouldn't be able to. Like where he was born, when did he become emperor, who did he become emperor with, how did he become the sole emperor of Rome, what council did he call, when did he call it, how many people came to the council, what was the council about. I can answer all of those questions, but if I wrote down a list of questions for you, Sheikh Mohammed wouldn't be able to answer them or he would have to pull out his phone to answer them. Sheikh Mohammed lied to you and I want you to let those words ring in your ears because Muslim scholars are lying to you about Christianity. They're lying to you. The, the doctrine of the Trinity is there in the Gospels and the Gospels predate St. Constantine. The doctrine of the Trinity is in the writings of the Church Fathers that come after the Gospels but were written hundreds of years before St. Constantine. Let me give you one example. If you look at the writings of Tertullian, he wrote before Constantine and he talks about the Trinity. Okay? So that's a proof that, that Sheikh Mohammed was lying to you. Please do, please do. And what you're going to find is everything I'm saying to you is true. Right? Everything. You could just, just do a quick one test now to see if I'm lying. It'll take you two minutes. Pull out your phone and type in, did Tertullian write about the Trinity? Yeah, let me, I'll type it in. Cioè, le prove, basta, uno si confronta, le prove di Dio, è vero. Che ti ha detto di Gesù? 
Tertullian originated new theological concepts and advanced the development of early church doctrine. He is perhaps most famous for being the first writer in Latin known to use the term Trinity. So I'm not lying to you, right? Now look at the date that Tertullian lived. It's, it's before Constantine. So Sheikh Mohammed is repeating the lies of Ibn Kathir. And Ibn Kathir has been lying to Muslims, right? So here's the thing, right? We get the Trinity from the Bible and we get it from the Church Fathers. Yeah? That's where we get it from. Also, Not Constantine. Also, if you look, uh, I try to look at the Old Testament, then you can see prophecies, like for example, Isaiah 53 and stuff. Like they, they all confirm the, the, the Trinity and the doctrine of the, uh, the, the Christians. Yeah, they do. So, uh, for example, like, if you see a Muslim, he's going to say the opposite. So I don't know which one to trust. You know? you so, know what I mean? the thing is, right? Would you agree with me that in uh, the science of Isnad, in the science of Hadith, yeah. if someone is found out to be lying, you shouldn't trust them? Yes, of right, I've shown you evidence that Sheikh Mohammed is a liar. Yes. So can you trust now Sheikh Mohammed? No. There you go. But, but yes. you've only tested me on one fact, I understand that, but so far on that one fact, what I've said has been true, hasn't it? Yes. Right, now obviously you have to test everything I'm saying, and that's totally appreciated. But so far, you, you, with evidence, you can see I'm not lying. Now you're right that, that Isaiah does confirm the doctrine of the Trinity. And the Bible confirms the doctrine of the Trinity. But the Bible was written before or at the first century. Constantine lived in the, the, the fourth century. Right? So that means Constantine could not have invented the Trinity. Right. But now here's a problem for you. Right? I've shown you, I've demonstrated that the Quran has an error in it. Now I'm going to show you that you can't, that you, 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 you can't trust Allah. Right. The Quran states that Jesus Christ wasn't crucified. It was made to appear to them that someone was crucified. Who made it appear to them? It has to be Allah. It has to be Allah. And then for that reason, are we agreed that for centuries people believed People believe. Miraculous became a Muslim. I've already also proven. I want to talk to you. Okay. I've also proven he's a liar as well. It's on video and so called okay. films. Yeah. I vote right. So come, come this way, Omar. Right. Yes. So um, yeah. In the in the hadith, they're all they're all frightened because you're a genuine student of knowledge. In the in the hadith, sorry. Um, Oh, we agreed that because Allah made it appear that Jesus was crucified, for centuries people believed that Jesus was crucified. Yes. Is that a deception? Yes, it says that it's, it's the best of planets. It's the best of this makra? Yes. Ah, and makra can be used for deception, can't yeah, it? Both of them. Yeah, exactly. So now let me ask you this. Now we've shown to you that Allah did deceive. According to the science of Hadith, can you trust someone who's a known liar? No, I wouldn't. Right. Does the Quran call itself Hadith? Uses the word Hadith to refer to the Quran. Did you know that? No. Right. Do you want me to show you? I guess, yes. Can you read Arabic? No. Ah, okay. So this is another thing you need to research it yourself. Just Google it now. Um, does the Quran call itself Hadith? Or does the word Hadith refer to the Quran in the Quran? Something like that. I mean, does it say it? Yes, I guess, yeah. Yeah, it refers itself to Hadith. But if I've just shown to you, using the Quran, that Allah deceived millions of people for hundreds of years, right? And Isnad science tells you, you can't trust a hadith that comes from someone you know lied. Logically, can you trust the Quran? Logically, for the sake of argument, no. Right. So, brother, you, you need to now think about, you need to rethink everything you've heard about Christianity and entertain the possibility that nearly everything you might have heard about Christianity is not true. I want to tell you, as Christians, that we believe firmly in one God. We don't worship any more than one God, we worship only one God. 
that we believe that 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 we should be disciples of Jesus Christ. We believe that you shouldn't uh, get drunk, that you shouldn't be sexually promiscuous. We believe that you should live a life of virtue. We believe that you should build your life on the hack. We believe that only God is the highest authority. We bow in worship to that God. Just as Jesus did in the garden where he prostrates himself. Christians prostrate themselves in prayer, right? These, we fast, we give to charity, we confess our faith, we go on pilgrimage. Yeah. Christianity is the original teachings of God. Yes, I mean, it looks like Islam, uh, the only difference is Jesus' figure. Like, yeah. Like you're same. absolutely right. So, yeah. Where are you from, bro? I'm from Italy. 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 Somalia. Italy, Somalia. Yeah, my dad is Christian. I'm Muslim. My dad is Christian. And your mum? Muslim. Oh, wow. That's an interesting combo. You don't get that much. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this question, bro. Right? Yeah. Um, that, well, not, not a question, I want to refer something to you, called Somali Christian TV. Okay. Right? Now, your dad is a Christian. Do you honor your dad? Of course, yes. Do you trust your dad? Of course. And you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? <laughs> right. Do you believe that your dad is a fool? No, of course not. Do you believe in him an idiot? No, no. So, if your father is following truth, okay. is, it, is it any loss to you to follow the same truth as your father? I mean... Uh... Però tu gli devi dire che io ero diventato musulmano, ma poi so, ho capito. Cioè, quindi è diversa. È, ho capito e vuol dire che la verità è quella che dico io. Per esempio, cosa ha capito? No, mio padre. Mio padre è italiano. Yeah. Sì. Yeah. No, ero cristiano, poi mi sono sposato, ho cambiato religione. Yeah. Però ho studiato tutto, yeah. pregato tutto, però alla fine non ho now, do you agree that I've given you good reasons to doubt the Quran using the Quran? Right. Can I just say to you, you know if you acknowledge that the Quran has errors in it, then you have already you've already left Islam. Yes, I know. I know. Yeah, so you've left Islam. Today you left Islam. I know. Congratulations. <laughs> right? Bravo. But now the question is, bro, let me ask you this question. Who is Jesus Christ to you? For me, it's a me, yeah. example. An example. Yes. If you accept that Jesus Christ is an example, I want to invite you to follow him. Now, is there any bad thing about following an example? Right. Yeah. I bet I can prove to you that Muhammad is not an example you want to follow. Do you know Muhammad um, had sex with a nine-year-old child? Yeah. Do you want to have sex with a nine-year-old child? No. Do you know Muhammad married a six-year-old child called Aisha? Do you want to marry a six-year-old child? Right. Why not? You're not attracted to children. It's immoral. It's immoral. So is it? So if there are two fitness coaches, and one of them is really fit, but the other one's really fat. Which fitness coach do you follow? So if there are two moral examples, one who does bad things and one who only does good things, which moral example do you follow? Right. Can you show me that Jesus Christ did anything bad? Have I just shown you that Muhammad did something bad? Yeah. Come, come forward, Amar. Yeah. Still lives today. You can still use these examples. So yeah, they do. You see, Islamic countries generally Yeah, and do you think that that's a good thing? Right. So you're saying that the 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 example of Muhammad is a bad example. You're acknowledging that, and I'm saying you're right to acknowledge that. You know what that makes you, Omar? It makes you a sensible person. It makes you an intelligent person. It makes you a person that can think. All I'm asking you to do today is to follow your own logic. Your own logic says the Quran has an error in it. Your own logic says Muhammad has bad examples. 
But Jesus Christ is a good example. All I'm saying is follow the example of Jesus Christ. Are you willing to follow Jesus Christ today? I'm not trying to force you, but because it has to be a free choice. But the point is, I'm, you, I think now you've reached a point where you recognize there are good reasons to follow the example of your father. Yes, that's true. Yes. Right. So if you acknowledge that you have good reasons to follow your example of your father, would you like to now pray with me and your father to give your uh, allegiance to Jesus Christ? It's up to you. I don't know if I feel like... Go on. I think... Shall we pray together for him to become a follower of Jesus Christ? You know, the thing is that I will acknowledge Jesus if he's, if he's going to, like, for example, if he's going to show up to me. Yeah. If he does that, I know in my heart that's uh, okay. yeah, true. I, I am Messiah! Jesus. I, I, Jesus. I am Messiah! He's the perfect man to be honest. I yeah. am Messiah! Just ignore him, ignore him. He was blameless. Yeah. So, stay there, stay there. And he's teaching like love your enemies. I, I really love them. Yeah. Sometimes you know I I listen to his words. Like I read the I, I read the Bible like a little bit of the gospels, especially the John. Yeah. So yeah, I'm still moved by you know. But and you, you know you know you know you know that movement in your heart. Yes, that is the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. Okay. That is when you because God has put His image in you, and when our, the, those of us that are aligned to the image of God. When we come near to truth, our heart vibrates. Okay. And when we are near to error, how our heart vibrates. And it yes. warns us about what is truth and what is falsehood. Okay. Now, you have recognized that Muhammad uh, has bad examples. You recognize Jesus Christ is a good example. Yes. You recognize that the Quran has errors in it, which means you're now already not a Muslim. You're, you've already stopped being a Muslim today. Seriously, you know that, I know that. Right? To affirm that the Quran has errors in it means that you're now not a Muslim. You're an apostate. Right. But since you're no longer a Muslim, the question is, are you willing now to follow in the same religion and the same path that your father has already tread? When, right now, we can pray together. Would you like to do that? Okay, let's do it. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay, we're all going to pray together. He's your father. You can put your arm around him. Okay. You're, he doesn't understand English. Okay, so I'm going to say a prayer. Right. You're going to translate it to your father. Okay. And then you're going to say Amen after each prayer. Could you translate that? And when he says Amen, you're going to say Amen too. I don't know, man. Are you right? No, there's no forcing. I don't no, want to force no, no, you. I don't, know, I don't know if I want to leave Islam. Like, you, all, you already have when you said that the Quran has errors in it. Like, it just feels like... You're not ready. not ready. That is yeah. fine. Okay. No pressure. Okay, if you're not ready now, you've got a Bible at home, right? I've got to just a bit of joy, that's it. Right. Maybe in time uh, I will decide, you know. Okay. Yeah. How, how can Jesus rule the world? Because no, no, there will be nobody alive when Brother, Jesus comes back. Because you are so close to the faith, you know, Jesus once met a man and he said, you are close to the kingdom of God. And I want to say to you, Omar, that you are close to the kingdom of God. Your father has blazed the way and you should follow in his trail. But I recognize that you're not ready yet to make that prayer and that is fine. I don't want to pressure you. You need to say it in your own heart when you're ready and you're firmly convinced. To help you in that direction, I want to give you a full Bible. Yeah. And you can, because you can read English, I want to give you a book that explains about the incarnations to inform you about the incarnation. So that these two are for you. And I also, I also want to give you, this is my card. Get in, that's my email. That's my website. This is my YouTube channel. Get in touch with me because I sincerely believe one day you're going to contact me to tell me you've become a Christian and we are all going to celebrate together. And the next time you come back to London, I want to take you both out for a meal. Oh, thank you so much. God bless you, Omar. You look after yourself. Uh, Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. God bless you. Uh, la pace de Jesus. God bless you. Take care. God bless. Peace be with you.
take care. Brav, brav. Do you want to bring your camera over this side so I can? Yeah, go on. Can you describe, Jesus sir, what has there. just happened? It's all right, relax. Yeah, yeah. What is Jesus coming to rule? There'll be Come nobody here, alive. Uncle. Relax, relax, relax. There'll be nobody alive. Please, please, please. Show your sign, show your sign. But, but don't talk. Show your sign, but don't talk. Go on. Yeah, can you describe, Bob, what has just happened in the young gentleman with his father on the verge? Yeah. So what happened was, in proof, proof, ladies and gentlemen, that there are such things as sincere Muslims. They are not all like the Dawah Gandhis here in the park. Omar is someone who is a genuine seeker after truth. And when presented with the arguments, he recognized that the Quran had errors in it. He recognized that Allah had lied. And he recognized that Muhammad was a bad example. And that means that he has already left Islam. He's now an apostate. And he was very close to saying a prayer of acceptance of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I, want, I want to encourage everyone to pray for Omar and pray that he will become a Christian and his mother as well. And because I think that one day in the course of this year, Omar is going to be a Christian and at some point in the future, his mother is going to be a Christian as well. I will be Jesus. And he was very close, but I will be Jesus. Unlike, unlike, unlike the Muslims, Show your sign, Uncle, please. Unlike, unlike, unlike the Muslims, we don't use peer pressure to get people to say shahadas. Muslims, they surround people. And then the expectation and the pressure from people is why a lot of very um, easily influenced, naive people say shahada. But we Christians don't work like that. We want people to make it freely from their own heart. And God willing, I believe that Omar will be one of those people and he will contact me and I will one day be able to share that news with you. Muslim, Muslim, Muslims are liars, Christians are liars, Jews are liars. Thank you, Uncle. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think it's fair to say that the Muslim community does a better job of instilling a strong sense of identity in its followers than lots of Christian fellowships. And it is a challenge for us as Christians to really cultivate a strong sense of Christian identity in our congregations. And I want to offer a tool that will help Christians to do that. And that is the idea of cultivating a culture. Cultivate a Christian culture. If you meet Greek Cypriots, they have a strong sense of their Christian identity because Christianity expresses itself as a culture in the Cypriot lands. To be Cypriot is to be Christian. And that is what we need to create, a culture. Go on, I any other questions? Oh, Give a minute. How can anybody survive a nuclear holocaust? There'll be nobody alive for Jesus. Thank you, Uncle. How can that be? Thank you, Uncle. How can that be that everybody they'll will all, be dead? They'll all be dead. Right, go on. What is Jesus going to Uncle, do? please, I'm being kind. Go on. How important was it for you, Bob, for the question? To give Omar some documentation, some books to take away with him. Yeah. This is what good evangelism looks like. Good evangelism is not shouting at the crowds, except at here in Speaker's Corner, because that's what you come here for. And unfortunately, lots of Christians think that that is what good evangelism looks like. It is not. Good evangelism is good conversation, good literature, and good follow-up towards good congregations that know how to welcome people into their churches. And that is why it is important that I don't give away silly 12 pence pamphlets that are written for the reading age of 10 year olds that have cartoon graphics and try to communicate the most important message in the world. I give away full solid academic books to people. Books that Christians donate to me. Books that I buy, read and then give away. I've been giving away books in this park for five years. If I can do it, why can't every evangelist do it? 
up your game, Christians. You're colouring in crayon while the enemies of the church are playing chess. I am Messiah! I am Messiah! God bless. I am Messiah! I am Messiah! God bless. I am Messiah!